Today's lesson is on rotations. If you remember last lesson, we learned about translations and reflections. Moving on to rotations, you're going to love this lesson and you want to know why? Because it's really quick. You're going to love that part. The part you're not going to love so much is that you have to memorize some rules. You remember in the lesson on reflections, we came up with some rules for reflecting over the line y equals x or the line y equals negative x or the x axis to the y axis. So we got those rules. You don't necessarily have to use those rules in order to be able to do those reflections. However, the rotation rules that are on the bottom of this first page, you have to memorize those and able to be the to do the rotations. So that's the bad news, I guess. All right, here we go. A rotation. Let me get my pen ready. A rotation of x degrees about point R, a fixed point called the center of rotation, is a transformation with these two properties. The first property is the image of R is itself. R equals R prime. And you remember that was the same for the reflection as well. Remember if the point, if the pre-image was on the line of reflection, then the image would also be on the line of reflection. So it's the same about this point, the center of rotation. If the pre-image is on it, the image will be on it as well. And then point number two says for any other point V, RV prime equals RV and the measure of VRV prime equals X. Oh my gosh, what the heck does that mean? I don't know. Let's look at it in a picture. That's going to make a lot more sense to us. Okay, so here's our picture. The positive number of degrees a figure rotates is called the angle of rotation. Okay, so let's look at this point V, looking back at this two here, this point V that is not on the center of rotation. So here's that point V right there. Okay, and what it says is that RV prime equals RV. So you see RV prime equals RV. So in other words, the distance of the point from the center of rotation will be the same for the pre-image and the image, okay, and the measure, that angle of rotation is going to be wh whatever it is, whatever it is, we're just calling it X here. So the angle that those two segments make, so if I draw RV prime and I draw the segment RV, the angle between those two segments is what the angle of rotation is. Okay. All right, so here are the rules. I cannot emphasize enough how much you have to memorize these in order to do your work, and I'm just going to write them down for you. I know I told you you don't have to make flashcards, but maybe make a flashcard for this so you can remember it. Oops. Okay, so for a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin, now these only work if our if this um, center of rotation is the origin. All right, x is going to change to negative y, and y is going to change to x. All right, if we're going 180 degrees counterclockwise about the origin, but when you think about it, does it really matter if I go clockwise or counterclockwise in the 80 180 degrees? Hmm, I don't think so. Okay, our rule is going to be negative x, negative y, and we'll do some examples here in a minute, and you'll see, you'll see how this plays out. Okay, and if we do 270 degrees counterclockwise about the origin, the rule will be y. Sorry, negative x. So there are our rules. We have to memorize them. Now, all we got left are some practice problems. So let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, just like the previous lesson, I'm going to ask you to pause here and go draw in all of your pre-images for all of these um, 
whatever we got, four problems to do. Do that and meet me back here. All right, here we go. We learned our rules, so let's let's uh, flip back and see what we got. The 90 degree counterclockwise, the rule is, you remember, and the more time you write these, the easier it's going to be for you to memorize it. So let's write it every time until we're experts. Okay, so 90 degree counterclockwise, there's our rule. So I, I'll, I'll sketch it in after I write the vertices. So for 2, 7, let me just write this here. So I'm going to switch the X and the Y, right? So that'll be 7, 2, and the first one becomes negative, negative 7, 2. Okay, so for B, which is 6, 5, got to switch the X and the Y. First one becomes negative. C, switch the X and the Y. First one becomes negative. So now let me sketch that in and make sure it looks like it is a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. And hey, by the way, guys, let me draw you something over here. When I say a counterclockwise rotation, it means that way, right? Why is it that, and what I want to say is that if the direction isn't specified, so for instance, if I just said 90 degree rotation, it would be implied that we're going clockwise, and the reason for that is because that's the standard way of measuring an angle, is counterclockwise. So if no direction is given, assume it's going to be counterclockwise. All right, I, I will try to always write which way, but that's, that's kind of a, a general rule. Okay, so let's um, sketch in our image here. We got negative 7, 2, negative 7, 2. So there's A prime, A prime, negative 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And C prime, negative 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Remembering that the origin is our center of rotation. We have to be using the origin in order for these rules to apply. So remember the two, the two properties that had to hold true is the first one was, again, if, if the image is on the center of rotation, it'll stay. We don't have that situation. And the second one said, if I draw, remember, here's our center of rotation. If I draw a segment from the center of rotation to the pre-image and the center of rotation to the image, those should be equidistant. They should be, those segments should be congruent, and they are. And remember, the angle created by those two segments should be whatever the angle of rotation is. Well, the angle of rotation is 90 degrees, and sure enough, we got ourselves a 90-degree angle. Well, I'm, you, you might be thinking, how do you know? You, you, I mean, it looks like it's 90 degrees. How could I prove to myself that, it's a, that, it, that that is a right angle? Oh, I could find the slopes, right? I could find the slopes of both of my red segments, and they'd be negative reciprocals, okay? And you'll find that that's going to be true. Let me grab another color here and just do one more of them so you can see. Okay, if I take, um, let's take B. So let's take B. So draw my segments from the pre-image to the image. Okay, they should be congruent. Each point is equidistant from the origin. All right, and then the angle should be a right angle, right? The angle of rotation is 90 degrees, so we can see that we did apply our rule properly. All right, so that's what you're going to do. I want you now, you got one, you got you got two more, and then a super duper challenge problem. You know I'm not going to tell you how to do the super duper challenge problem till you've tried it, and then we'll have to discuss that either in class or office hours. So I want you to do these next two problems. I will put them up for you. Remember to write your rule first. 
look back to that first page, see what it is, and come back here then and we'll check our answers. Okay, we're back. So first thing I did, I wrote my rule here. Well, of course, I drew my pre-image triangle XYZ down here in purple. And once I apply my rule, the X and the Y stay in the same place. They just both become the opposite of what they currently are. So the coordinates of X are 3, negative 2, so it'll become negative 3, positive 2. Both of those just become negative, so that's a fairly straightforward one. And you can see that I drew the pink lines or red lines in here to indicate that the angle of rotation is indeed 180 degrees, and you can also see that those segments from the center of rotation to the image and pre-image are congruent. Okay, the next one, 270 degrees counterclockwise. So if I look at that, so here's 90 degrees, right? Here's 180, here's 270. That's 270 counterclockwise. What would that be in the clockwise direction? It'd be 90 degrees clockwise, right? So if I wanted to trick you because I didn't give you any clockwise rules, right? But if I said, hey, do the 270 degree or, or the 90 degree clockwise rotation, well, all you'd have to do is go and get your 270 degree counterclockwise rule, right? Don't forget to think just because you have some rules to follow. All right, so I wrote down my 270 degree clockwise rule and then that gives me these vertices. Okay, so I graph that in. Now, let me, um, let me take my red pen here. Let me go from my center of rotation to the pre-image, center of rotation to the image, and I can see that that's a 270 degree counterclockwise rotation. Okay, likewise, I'll do it for H. I'll do it for H here. I don't want to do it. It gets a little messy if I do it for all three of them. So if I go from the center of rotation to the pre-image H, and the center of rotation to the image H prime, those things do to appear to be congruent, and of course I could easily find out by using the distance formula, and again, it does appear that I have a 270 degree angle. How could I find out? Oh, well, for sure, I could find the slope of those two red segments, right? And if they're negative reciprocals, then I know I have done what I needed to do. All right, here's your super duper challenge problem. I'm going to give you a big hint, okay, since we're not actually having school and you can't uh, talk to someone else about it. Remember how I told you the, the rules don't really apply unless our center of rotation is the origin. So this center of rotation is 3, 2. So I'm going to put it up here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So there's our center of rotation. So hint, so I'm going to say pretend, I know that's not a good word, but pretend, and my pen won't write, pretend like that point, 3, 2, is the origin. Okay, if that were the origin, then these two points wouldn't be those two points, right? So, so what I'm saying is relabel those points as if this were the origin. So basically we would just kind of draw a make-believe coordinate system here with 3, 2 being our origin we'd relabel these points. Let's how about this? Let's put those points in here, 2, negative 2, 1, 2. So there's A. B is 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
here's point B. So in other words, now that we've given ourselves a new origin, what are the coordinates of those points? Then apply our rules and see what you get when you do this. It's a good problem, guys. If you were going to be in school, I'd probably put it on the test. All right, that's it for this lesson. Uh, next lesson is on symmetry. We'll see you then.